Hi, and thanks for watching this Acumatica video on the Acumatica Report Designer. So the Acumatica Report Designer is a separate utility that allows you to design new reports and edit existing reports. So the first thing we need to do is install it. While Acumatica is 100% web-based, the Report Designer and the Device Hub are Windows-based. So we'll click on our 2019 R1 installer and we'll select next and accept the license agreement. So let's install the report designer. So now that the report designer is installed, we'll click finish. There's not a lot you do from the Windows desktop. Instead, while you're in Acumatica, If you need to make a change to a report, you'll come into that report. So let's say, for example, we want to modify the sales order form. So we'll open up an existing sales order. And while we see the report on the screen, if you click on the pencil up here, this is your parameter screen. There's a few tabs here where you can select your parameters. Normally when we print an order, the order type and the order number are passed along. So we typically don't fill this in for the sales order report. But you have additional sorts and filters. You have print and email settings. You have report versions, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But up at the top, if you have the rights, you can click on edit report. Now the rights are to add the user to the role report designer. So you'd go into users. You'd pick your user and you'd scroll down to report designer and check it off and now this particular user will see the edit report button the other way to do it is if you go into roles and you open up report designer you can add any number of users that you want to the report designer role so let's click on edit report. Now that the report designer is installed, it's automatically associated with this RPS extension. So let's click open. And Acumatica asks you to log in. So basically this parameter screen is pre-filling in the URL. It's pre-filling in the report that we're going to be editing. It pre-filled in our username and all we need to do is type in our password. So this is the report designer. So just to get a general landscape of the report designer, what I like to do is I like to split screen with my existing report. So if I turn off this pencil here, I can now see what the report looks like as I'm making changes to it. it gives me a better sense of the types of settings I want to make. So at the top of the screen what you can see is your menu items. We have our normal file commands which we'll get to in a second. We have build schema. Let's take a quick look at that. So what this does, and this is similar to our generic inquiry video that we've done, this lists all the tables that are part of this report, their joins, their relationships. So for each table join, there is a field at the bottom that's joining it. Any parameters that might be part of this report. So if you recall earlier, order type and order number were parameters. If there's built in filters, and certainly if you have parameters, you're going to have filters because you're going to pass the parameter as part of the value to these fields that you're filtering. Any sorting and the viewer fields. These are all the fields that are potentially available to the report. So that's the schema builder. Some of the other options, you can do an undo or redo on this. You can change your formatting. So you can change the alignment and things like that. We don't have anything selected, so all this stuff is grayed out. 
and we can turn on our grid. It's nice to be able to snap to the grid when moving things around. So you can see a few things. First off is the first header section, header section one. And this particular report isn't using that. Then we have a group header section here where we can see the header, the top section of the report. And then you could see another header section for our line number, item, pricing, all these captions that are at the top of the column. And then you have your detail section. And in this case, our detail section shows all the line items on this order. So let's take a look at a couple of things. So the first is our order number. Now this is just a caption. Now on the right hand side, you can see our properties. So as I highlight this, I can see all the properties on the right hand side that are relative to this text box. That's what it is. It's a text box. So some of the things of interest, there's style here. And you can see the style name is heading. There's a number of different types of styles that you can select from. So if you're trying to make a field look just like this one, you might take a look at another field, find the style name, and then simply match it up here. So this way you ensure that your fonts are delivered the same way that you want. So if I take a look at this up here at the top, the style name here is called document name. You can see that selected there. If I needed something else to look exactly like that, rather than go through, pick all the different colors and the fonts and the alignment, the style name has all that stuff baked right in. So if we go back to order number, you can see different parameters such as wrap text, whether or not we allow multiple lines, it's not really applicable here because it's just a one line caption. Whether or not this field is visible, we can turn it off and on. We can also have a visible expression, meaning if a certain value exists in the database, then it can make this field appear or not appear. And that's very useful in many situations. You may hide some fields based on the condition of this order or some of the elements related to this order. One example might be less discount. So this is visible only if the page index equals the page count, meaning it only shows up on the last page. And you could see that about all these other fields too. They only show up on the last page, which makes sense. The other thing we can see if we move to the right of order number is a field that includes data from the database. So over here, the style name is heading one, and here's the value that we're pulling out. So if we drill into this field, we can see a formula editor, and this one's as simple as it gets, equals this field. So how do we find this? So this came from the sales order table, and if we scroll down, we can see order number, and basically what we did is we double clicked on it and the field appeared in our formula editor. So now we don't want to leave this, we'll take it out for now. But you can see that this is already set up. But there's other things you can do with this. There's many different functions you can do. Here are some variables such as the line number. Variables can be passed throughout the report from section to section. This allows us to aggregate data so I can take the average of a bunch of records or the total count or the max value. These allow us to handle string. So for example, I want you to trim the left side of the string value. So maybe there's some space on the left hand side or the right hand side. You can trim it out. You can do things like uh, take the first few letters uh, from the left side. That's what the left and the right functions do. You can replace values. So you could search through a string and if it finds this, you could put this in its place. So there's a number of different functions that you can use. A lot of these are out on the internet. I recommend that you go through and search for some of these functions because they are common. 
The last thing I really want to show is our conditions because this really gives you the ability to do a lot of cool things. And that's this if expression, true or false. If expression is true, use this value. If it's false, use this value. So let's find an example. So over here we have our freight and miscellaneous charges. So you can see the value here. We'll open it up. We're taking the premium freight plus the freight amount plus the miscellaneous totals. So that's great. But let's say we want to do something where if this equals zero, then we'll just say none, the word none. So it's nice and clear to the customer looking at the order. So what we can do there is click on program shortcuts. We're going to replace. I'm going to leave this up here for now so I can start to type. And we'll add this expression. So we'll take this and we'll put it in the expression. Okay. And we'll say if it equals zero, then we'll say none. Now, for those of you familiar, this is easy, but if you're not familiar, a string or a text value requires single quotes. So this none is our, if this expression is true, we're going to use the word none in the place of that field instead of zero. Now if it's false, we basically want to use the formula. So we'll put it in there. Now what we'll do is we'll move this to the bottom. We'll put comments around it. You can see down here below, this is how you can put comments. We'll clean it up a little bit. And then we'll click validate. Now we'll click OK. And now we've made our first change. Now I want to make one other change so that it's obvious. What we'll do is we'll put a new caption on the order. So I'll come up here and I'll drag and drop text. We'll put it right here, right where we can't miss it. And we'll type in a self-serving plug. Make it a little bigger. And then what we could do again is under style name, we could pick the same style name as the document name. So we'll come over here and we'll find it. Make it a little bigger. Now, in order to save this, we have two options. One of them is simply enough to say file save. However, I recommend a better option. And I recommend you do this all the time. And that is save to server. And what that does is it saves it, but it gives you the option to get this dialog box, which allows us to save it as a new version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this conditional freight and cloud nine ERP. And then I'll click OK. And what's nice about this is I can always roll back to a previous version. So let's click OK on this. Now Acumatica does all the work. If you've used other report designers, you'll know that you have to file save it, you save the file to your local hard drive, then you have to get that file over to the ERP server and you have to publish it and it's a whole process. But with Acumatica, as soon as we save it, in this case we saved it as a new version, it immediately goes right over to the ERP system on the web. So let's make this bigger. And if we go back into a sales order, we open it up and print it. We can now see the two changes we made. First off, we have our caption up here. And at the bottom, it's showing freight and miscellaneous. So it's showing 1345. Now let's go find a sales order which has zero freight on it. Before we do that, if I click on the pencil and I go over here to report versions, notice I have my new version, conditional freight and cloud nine ERP, and it's currently active. If I ever needed to go back to my original version, I can uncheck this, or I'd have additional versions listed across here. 
So let's find a sales order with zero freight in it. So we'll click on status. What I'm looking for is just an open sales order that I can make changes to it. We'll open this one up. We'll go over to our totals tab and we can see that our freight is zero. So let's try and print this. Now if we scroll to the bottom, you can see it says none. So this is really cool. You can do a lot of different things with the conditions. Now let me show you one other thing and that is inside the report designer if I click either here in the upper left hand corner or I click anywhere in this yellow area I have my properties updated to the actual report so this is the base of the report now there's a few settings which are interesting the first one is the common settings so this allows me to always print in PDF so every time the report gets deployed it'll be in PDF format. Now if we go back into Acumatica in the upper left hand corner you can click this button manually and bring it up as a PDF. So you can do this manually and go back to HTML if you need to. However if I change this value it will automatically show view PDF. Now I'm going to turn it back because I think you get the idea. But the other thing I can do is under mail settings, there's a number of different things for emails, which is really cool. The first is I can change the body of an email. So let's look at that and see how that comes out. So when I'm looking at the report itself and I hit the send button, my email editor comes up with a default email template. So first off, the body of this email is right here under body. So if I click the dot dot, you can see this is where it's getting that information. So let's say I wanted to make a change to this. I don't want to say dear customer. I want to use the customer's name. So what I can do with that is I can say dear and turn off my string. Okay, I have the comma here, but now I need to put a field in there. So what I'll do is I'll put plus. This is the format for it. We'll look for the billing contact. Now, on second thought, let's look for the shipping contact. And we'll pick attention. Then we'll put another plus here. And then we'll start our string back up with another single quote. So now instead of dear customer, we're going to get the shipping contact. So let's click OK on that and look at a couple other fields. You could see the to field is here. That's the email address for this particular shipping contact. The subject, we can make changes to that as well. But this is what it looks like currently. So let's save this. We'll save it as a new version. Email template modified. We'll click OK and we'll minimize this so you can see what this looks like dear customer we'll go into sales orders and let's take a look at the sales order before we jump the gun let's take a look at the ship settings and make sure we don't have an attention here so let's add that we'll override the contact and we'll put in a name and you can see we already have the email as part of the shipping contact We'll save it and then we'll print it. And one quick thing, you'll notice again report versions shows the new version which is active. If I need to go back to this older version I can do that as well by checking this. Let's go back to the report and let's hit the send button. So now you can see it says Dear Greg Mercedes instead of customer. Looks a lot nicer. So that's it for today. There's a ton of different things you can do in the report designer. If you have additional questions, at the end of our video is our contact information. We'd love to hear from you. Feel free to reach out. Thanks so much for watching.